ladies and gentlemen welcome to this video and in today's video you know i was browsing and i saw this and i was like yo this is gonna be a crazy one bro like this one is gonna be a crazy one did slavery affect your family africans versus african americans you know i'm sorry i'm an i'm an african i'm from cameroon and i'm I'm a bit, a bit biased here because you all Americans, you know, you guys will get it, man. Like, for real, man. Please don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, and let's get into the video. I came here to better my life, and I feel like personally, we need to stop using the word racism to when we don't get something or when something don't go our way. Damn. Let me jump in real quick. No disrespect, but racism exists, and I have to acknowledge it. And I can't just ignore it. But what I can do is not buy into the system. Bruh, Jubilee is... You'll be going crazy out here. Because, see. See how they started their intro. Okay, cool. Let's see. Middle ground. Step forward if you agree. Slavery affected my family. Mm. 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 Okay, only Americans are going forward. Um, yeah. You know, please, Americans, don't forget we had colonization. So it's, you know, a lot of killings to occur, tribal wars, you know, invasion from Arabs, invasions. You know, it's it was crazy, bro. Like, it was crazy, man. I mean, that's just evident in my last name, King. I mean, that's the brand of the slave owner that put that name on my family all those years ago, and I'm still wearing it in those ways, along with the compounded, you know, economic okay. disparity, social disparity, mental trauma, all of that. I mean, okay, I it's, in, it's, it's tethered forever. So to go back to slavery and talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, um, it has never stopped. So there is no post. What my great-grandparents were teaching my grandparents who taught my mother, who taught me, came from what they learned through slavery. So there's a lot of fear, a lot of insecurity, a fear of society, a fear of law enforcement. So slavery has made a major impact where the low self-esteem is consistently reoccurring. I think for me, growing up in Los Angeles, California, in the early 1960s, okay. there was a stereotype that I didn't want to be black, I didn't want to be African because Damn. we come from Damn. Africa or we're slaves. Damn. So I want to be a Chinese Damn. boy, I want to be Bruce Lee. Damn. Um, so growing That's up crazy, like man. that, That's crazy. I, I didn't like myself and who I was. I didn't mm. like the color of my skin or the way that I spoke. So Damn. I emulated other people. I wanted to be something that I was not. Especially in, in, in the 70s. Literally only go back a couple generations and then it's like, the documents just don't exist. There's no record. It's like, you know, my family has completely been erased. In that same point too, in the time that we've been here, we've created an incredible culture. Okay. And we have so many things to be proud of. And I always reframe the narrative myself. And I speak of my ancestors that were enslaved as, you know, doctors and healers. And it's like, the, you know, we were taken because we were talented. Right. You know, okay. Because we had I love that. to offer. And we built this country so and still still building and still building and <laughs> something to take pride in so can they disagree a step forward let's get the africans let's see yeah. slavery didn't affect my family but we did but we did suffer a different type of slavery back home like we went to colonization like I, I am that's true naked. It was a, i'm a cameroonian man this my nigga look it up they kill like more than 300,000 of my people yeah. because we didn't want to assimilate to to the French culture, but it's still yeah, nothing man. compared like, to what it was crazy, man. It was more than 500k, like been through, you know. I wouldn't want to minimize that pain, though. What you just said hurt me. That 300,000 people were were killed because they would not conform to the colonization of the French people. So that is just as painful and hurtful as the the trauma that we suffered here in America. I can't share the same experience that you have went through in your family. Even though we also had our own type of slavery, we had apartheid at the time, yeah. you know, apartheid where the Dutch crazy, people bro. took right. over and they wanted to just apartheid have South crazy. Africa, Namibia, and I think white, other yeah. countries where we could only just speak Dutch. It's somehow still happening even now. There's like a place in South Africa where it's called Orania, you know, and it's just Dutch people there. 
no black person right. is even allowed there. So we yeah, still no, somehow feel that oppression even now, well, but it's nothing like compared Ryan, to yeah. what your ancestral history, you know, has gone that's through. True. I'm that's somehow true. happy that you guys yeah. have forgiven it's, it, even though yeah. you haven't forgotten it. Have yeah. you forgiven it? <laughs> like <your face laughs> like, mm. <laughs> but me personally, no, I haven't. Um, but I want to work through the change. But no, I have not forgiven because it's a system that's still going on. And from what I'm hearing from you guys, there's a system that's still going on in Africa as well. And it's, uh, and it's a war on us. Racism is the main cause of poverty among black people in America. My... Mm. I won't say the main cause. I will say a cause, but not the main cause. You know, bro, like, I speak only of black Americans, but I will speak of all blacks. Be you a black Africa, African, be you a black European, be you a black. Um, I don't, you know, I'm direct. I'm the most direct person. You know, we. I always say this, and I speak to my dad, in terms of race, we are the most lazy race, we are the most distracted race, you know, we cannot build a race, we cannot build a community of only entertainers, rappers, killers, and all like, no, we need engineers, we need all that, you know, we cannot build a community on hate, we cannot build a community on laziness, this is a wake up call, all blacks, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Racism is a very big issue. That yeah, it's a big issue. Talking about it, I'm really trying to be careful to not like say anything that will be insensitive. If opportunity is right here, they will give it to people of other race than African American and okay. Africans too. So if there's a job that maybe have math requirement. I feel like they'll pick an Asian person or they believe, oh, African-Americans will not dress appropriate. So they will pick another person. They will always like yeah, pick dress people appropriate. that are not you have to dress appropriate. black over people I'll that understand. are black. I understand. I think, um, I think the crucial like missing point when we talk about economic disparity, time. Time is the most valuable currency. Yeah. And if you have like a stock that's like the American dream is the stock and you know during all that time all that asset the American dream was appreciating and you're not allowed to take out business loans you're not allowed to read you're not allowed to write you have to first fight to become three-fifths of a citizen then you got Jim Crow and then you got everything else it's like you're now having to buy in at a price so high because the time is irreparable you can't get that back one black person today cannot in one lifetime achieve what generations of white families were able to do simply because they didn't have to compete with us to do it. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally. Like, I believe. Yeah. I was thinking, just like somewhere. you said, from a historical standpoint, we start with slavery, then that's we can start centuries, generations of stolen labor, like you said, then we get into Jim Crow, which is just an extension of that. Then we have redlining, we have mass incarceration, we have events like the bombing of Tulsa and Rosewood in Florida and all these different examples of our wealth being decimated. And I don't say that to come from a defeatist or a victim mindset, but I think if we just have an honest conversation about history and what we've gone through and we've been here, um, racism is definitely a big part of that. And there are a lot of successful black Americans, a lot of millionaires, a lot of, you know, business owners, but they're exceptions for sure for a reason. Um, and there's a big difference between income. But now we don't we don't we don't have what we call joint ventures. You understand, like rappers, you know, in in the community entertainers. What happens is, when this person dies, it's over. We don't know how to continue with succession, so um, it's always gonna be a problem. Come and wealth. I would like to challenge the ideal that African Americans are lazy or that we don't have a good work ethic. I think there's this perception that, you know, we're here, we're in America, how are we not doing better for ourselves? So navigating the world of business oh, funding. I'm sorry, can feel but we more. must watch at you, you can know, use your savings I'm a bit lazy to see. Do, I have time other from this video, man. We're just gonna flow with the ads. I thought, I thought I was gonna be the only one staying. I was gonna be like, oh, I'm about to be like Kanye West. But <laughs> okay, there's a lot of things that we can do as an excuse to hold us back. To not, That's uh, it. Not to reach our potential. This, this is my guy. But this is up my to guy. Us to look past that. You know, like me coming from Africa, I came here to better my life, my family. I'm the only one here. 
And since I have been here, there's a lot of bad things that happen to me. There's also a lot of good things that happen to mm. me. As African or African Americans, need this, we need to we need like, look past life. like racism and like just focus on our own goal. Like, what do we want to achieve? And we need to stop using the word racism to when we don't get something or when something don't go our way. And just keep trying. You know. So let me jump in real quick. No disrespect, but racism exists, and I have yeah, to acknowledge it. it. And I can't just ignore it. But what I can do is not buy into the system. You know, if I want to do something, let me be the entrepreneur. What I believe happened in the 1960s is that we started looking for equal rights, to be equal with other people. And what we stopped doing, and I heard you talk about Tulsa, we stopped using the black-owned businesses. You know, um, before coming to Canada, I was in the U.S. and south side Chicago. I went to the Bronx and all these dangerous places and, you know, I realized something. People don't struggle for the basic necessities. You all have light, water, food shelters, food donations, electricity, internet in every coffee shop or library, you know, bruh. Public transport is great roads, you know. So I I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't get it, you understand? I don't really get it because bruh. If I bring you to the worst neighborhood in, 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 okay, let's say Cameroon, and I bring you to the worst neighborhood in America, bruh, you know, it's two different worlds. Like, when you enter Cameroon, only from the airport, you see kids of five or three years struggling to sell you things. Are you understanding? So, it's in such a way that once we keep putting that mindset, are you understanding? China towns, China Asians and you know Europeans and whatsoever that we're in competition with bro we've got to do better we've got to do better because the moment we keep complaining and looking for excuses to you know to protect the wrong things in our community and speak about the wrongs you know we we we, we are indirectly deceiving our own selves yeah now, because you guys got to understand, the Fair Housing Act in 1968, I'm five years old. That's when we could move off the east side of L.A. and move into other subcultures. So what I wanted to do at eight years old was go to IHOP. I didn't want to go to the Ma and Pa restaurant anymore. I wanted to go to, let's go eat at the hotels. So what we did is stop supporting each other and started supporting corporate America. So the racism plays a major part, but we don't have to buy into it. I have been waiting to disagree with you, my brother. <laughs> I've been, I'm waiting patiently. Girl, don't sugarcoat. Is, don't even sugarcoat. Even I want to disagree with you, I get yeah. where you're coming I know you want the American support that. When you see all speak. that stuff. I'll be like, what is wrong with these people? You guys have food. You have EBT, that all these things. <laughs> and you're here shouting about somebody is racist too. Just leave that person and move on. I feel that way. Like, why are they always, like, complaining? But... When Black Life Matters started happening, like I sat down, I said, I need to actually know why these people are pained. And if we look at the history, what they've done to them, like if you actually sit down, watch some documentaries, how they were maltreated, how the, I don't think if I'm actually born, I will forgive those people. I don't care. It's easier for us Africans that were raised in Africa to feel like they're complaining because we were raised through struggle. Like I barely even have water and you, you have water, you're complaining. But then it's not about the basic necessity or about how we are raised. We are raised like, I don't want to say way better. We might not have resources, but there are some way, like our own um, people will not. That's, this is my she didn't understand what this guy nobody nobody denied that racism doesn't exist you know he's simply saying you shouldn't use it as an excuse i understand he wants you can't get something she's bro all of us we know black lives matter is for our own good because tomorrow i can be the one you know he's just simply saying despite the racism it should instead motivate you to work more because the more you work more the, the the how can i say you know you fight to be in strategic places whereby 
the influence changes imagine if 80 percent of black americans were into tech what could happen it could show that there's a very big demand for us because we control so many big and great sectors in such a way we can influence decisions but if we keep you know being the victims it gives the oppressors more power okay it's just like you for example take for example you have a child of five years old you understand he acknowledges that you're stronger than him every day he's so afraid of you 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 tend to use that as an opportunity to dominate him but if when that child grows and becomes stronger you start being afraid of him like america is afraid of china because of the capacities china can do are you understanding so we as blacks we need to elevate ourselves for us to be respected yeah or look down on us or put us behind so it's in their they're not sure that way like they just can't overlook it and if you sit down and watch everything that the, the forefathers have been through for you i changed my mind no they need to be angry however they should still move forward i mean we we, we have police brutality back home too we have like if you go to cameroon and then you see how that police officer treat like treat us and they're, they're black just like us you're not even gonna believe it you know, and in Cameroon we have this thing where have you heard, have you guys heard the word like tribalism? So yeah, yeah, yeah it happens. So, in yeah, so so we do get oppressed too. Mm, and I agree. So when I'm saying like we need to like look past that, I'm not saying forget what happened to you guys or me. But at the end of the day, we cannot just sit and just grieve on the past. We have to be able to move on, but not forget. If I could choose a place to live, it would obviously be my country. I love my country, but. Right now, my country is not the best choice for me. Yeah, There's this, a little genocide going on in Cameroon right, right now. So many right little innocent lives, lives are being taken. If I was still in my country, the opportunity that I have here, I would not have those opportunities. Bro, that's it. That's, that's the Hip-hop. first thing. When we Africans, we get here, we, you know, you need to see us at the airport. The first day I got to America, I was like, yo, wow, I'm really opportune. But it doesn't, you know, but I'm grateful because... A very good way to fight depression is by you know struggling to realize that you're in a situation where other people want to be take for example once you realize that you know I have shelter I have every I have food and all like you know you'll be able to be more in a thankful position and that will help you combat depression that's why if you see most people in NGOs or in charity organizations why are they not depressed because you know there's that fulfillment in struggling to helping people so yeah reinforces stereotypes about the black community Same, yeah. i think um i think rap music is a, it's a, when i started my business in 2011 i chose wix and it was ads. really because the aesthetic that wix brought to my brand really In South Africa, we have our own version of hip hop, so we call it Kwaito. So they would rap in our own language in different, we call it Venek. So back home, it kind of did reinforce some stereotypes because now when you go out in the world, people will just classify you under one group. And growing up, also looking at American entertainment, looking at the hip hop that's done here, I'm like, oh, well, you're rapping about drugs, you're rapping about this. Of course it's going to happen. Of course you're going to go to jail. But getting older, you see the culture as well of hip hop. I had to understand that there's a culture within that. When I was alive when hip hop started, and it was, it was during a time where people rapped about what they saw, what they wanted, what they wanted in life. And then it became where people rapped about what they had been through, what they had gotten over, you know, used to sell drugs, used to hurt people, but now this is who they are. Um, and I think it's gotten into now, and in our day and age now, it's where people are glorifying and wanting to That's pretend it. that these are the things why, that they do on a daily you, basis. Someone was killed not. 10 people so it went from story in his telling lifetime becomes a really hero in the black community. But it's it becomes a legend. Our culture. Chicago I don't want to legends. own my radio so and all I'm hearing is I put a bullet in it, something, something. Like, I'm like, eh? <laughs> That's what you would do? <laughs> no, like, and then it's like, it's all about like, 
talking about female body type, the booty, the thing. Like, don't talk about my booty like that. So I don't want to listen to something that portray me as a female that way or something that is talking about how you put bullets in my head. Like, if you actually do not come to America and see for yourself, you will think that most African-Americans are carrying guns around and they just shoot randomly or they just grab your ass or something like that. That's the way the music portray them. And music is a very important element in our society. It's like the window of this a lot of people, both young and adult, and then they kind of see all those stuff and they act like that, even though that's not what they really want to be. They act like that and behave like that. Like if if all these rappers are your your role model, then you want to be like them. You want to be cool too. So in the end, it's about like the people that are packaging the music. And sometimes it's about trend. It's what people want to hear. The American dream is only for white people. I believe that the American dream is only for white people because it says equal. And when we talk about equal, there's no equality between um, the 1%, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Trumps, and the people who really run um, the media and things of that nature. So for black people growing up in America and living in America, we could become rich, we could become wealthy, but we are not on the equal playing field of white America. The system of white supremacy, which is in the law enforcement, which is in the uh, judicial system, which is in the prison industrial association, also in the politics, um, we are not equal in any of those terms. When I was back there when you were speaking, I, I started thinking like, could we ever actually, as black people, have the American dream here in America? And I don't, I don't know if we really can being, I'm trying to be careful with my words, but I, I do think there needs to be a, a degree of separatism. Like black people, we really need to have our, our own. Um, to, to everything is possible. You take know, part in that dream. This is it, depends, it depends on Why your definition of the of American dream. Yeah. In a system that wasn't designed for us. The American dream doesn't end at money. The American but, dream know, freedom is, the way that I define it is, you know, freedom of opportunity. That freedom is to true, choose yeah. what I it all what depends I want on to do, definition. freedom to acquire wealth the same way that anybody else can. Um, obviously, we're fighting the tides of time on that uh, and and our circumstances, but it's hard because it's, it's hard to honor that, but then also want more for myself. And I think that as black people, we're always teeter-tottering on that line of like, well, am I American? Like, do I get the American dream or do I... Do we just tear all this shit down and build something new? White people are not the only people entitled to the American dream, ever. And I think that that's why we're all here, because our ancestors made it so that we can stand here and pursue that American dream. I wouldn't have been here if it meant that it was not for everyone. I wouldn't have even entered America. You know, I feel like not just African, but other people as well in different countries. And from what I have seen, I've seen other people, even Africans and African Americans, succeeding in their own way. And that's why I feel like, like you said, you can interpret the American dream in a different way, whatever industry or whatever it is that you're focusing on, because there is a level of opportunity there. There is some way that you can be successful. You know, talking about Trevor Noah, you know, who took over The Daily Show, it wouldn't have been possible for him coming in as an African. He got his American dream. It made us as well, other Africans, believe that it is possible. The American dream writes his check. So he gets to have wealth, or whatever it is that he's experiencing. But, but the American dream some people don't even have that check. opportunity to to, to, oh. to receive a check, man. Okay, okay. The homelessness <laughs> out here is crazy. Do you see how we would put it as he had his American dream? <laughs> even he had his dream. Someone writes his check. He had his but dream. But for him, or for some of us looking at it on the other mm -hmm. side, that's his American dream because his goal was to get there. The biggest cultural shock I saw coming here was definitely the lifestyle because the lifestyle I saw of America, especially Los Angeles, was portrayed as a very rich lifestyle. And of course, I came here as a, school, as a student and coming here, living here and seeing the reality of it, seeing different homeless people, disadvantaged people, was really a cultural shock for me because I didn't expect to see that. And I guess also the way people were handling each other because coming in as an African, I thought people were together. But 
since being here, I saw that there was a huge divide, or there is still a huge divide within the African American community themselves. If he had stayed in, uh, in South Africa, would he have had the same opportunity that he had here? No, no. Like, I like this know, guy. So he makes me remember a friend of mine. But like us growing up, the reason we move here is because we don't have it better back home. Like me, sure. but like for me, I'm the first person ever in my family in America. Everybody else is back home. Everybody is depending on me. Us in America, like, for mom, example, she's dying we to come take here. Take off 15 like, people behind you. She's willing to do anything just for her to be in America. So for me, when I look at those like little thing, I'm like, yeah, American dream is for everybody, you know? Like, yeah, we might not have the same opportunity as the white right. people, but there's still that little chance that mm -hmm. a lot of us. That little chance, like he said, little chance, the little chance. This is the little chance. No matter what, you know, if I don't know, is it Martin? Look, uh, sorry, my comics. If you want to kill a man, kill his hopes, there's still that little chance, man. Back home, I wanted to take just to get here. Why haven't you booked a call yet? Did something come up? This is a friendly reminder. Book a free call. Some people started. I trust law enforcement. Everything we say. All right. Nobody, Can the disagree like. a step forward? Nobody like. Nobody. Me, it, me, Barack Obama doesn't even trust the securities themselves. Like. So, man, I'm sorry, bro. I got married to a young lady who did 15 years in prison for a robbery she didn't commit. Damn. I myself That's was crazy, That's crazy. incarcerated That's crazy. for six months for a burglary that I couldn't have committed because... Damn, that's crazy. I'm very sorry for that. Because I was in prison. So in 1987, I'm doing um, 19 months in prison. When I came home in 1988, I was given a burglary charge and I had to sit six months. And the judge did not kick it out because there's no way I could have done it. He kicked it out because they didn't serve me the warrant while I was in prison. So I, I'm That's crazy. Them. They lie and they do things and, and it affects That's our crazy. people. So many people I know who have been wrongfully arrested, wrongfully convicted, and they actually lie on the stand. So there's no trust. As you guys know, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. It was the capital of the Confederate. Uh, I have been brutally abused by the police there. Like personally, I was at the river on the 4th of July. I don't smoke, I don't do none of that. The police come and arrest me because I look like a drug dealer. Like they like arrested me. Yeah, I, then uh, when I was in high school, my senior year, my father went to jail over a car accident. A car accident and I was left alone at 17 years old. I was grateful, uh, one of my teachers took me in and like raised me. I, 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 I don't try to stay away from the police as much as possible. First of all, they're human beings, and I, I think that just because you put a badge on doesn't that doesn't magically bewitch you with like integrity and um, a desire to actually help the people around you. I think a lot of times, police culture comes from police families. It comes from like legacy lines and this whole like kind of like culture about stuff. I mean, I don't trust them any more than I would trust any other person. They haven't earned that necessarily, especially not as an institution in its purest form. I think it's necessary, but. Um, they have a lot of living up to that to do and to make up for if they're going to be uh, trusted. So I've seen law enforcement here on social media and seeing how they treat people of color, you know, from like hitting them. I mean, George Floyd, you know, rest in peace. But just seeing that from my experience being here, I was scared, you know, like every time I see a cop cop pass by, I'm like, okay, I better make sure I'm driving okay, you know, because I don't want to be stopped or make sure you're not in any harm's way, you know, but it's sad to feel that, to feel that pressure every time you see a cop going by. And even if they trying to help, but I wouldn't even want that help because of what I've been seeing on social media, you know, and also seeing the case of people being wrongfully, you know, um, taken to prison, that's like unfair. Like what type of research are you doing before you arrest people? And I immediately thought about the history of the police too, just tracing that back to slave patrols, which mm -hmm. became our modern day police departments. And oh, the fact that like if you have a felony, you can't vote. Like that to me is like, talk about the loss of the American dream. Like you should, you are a citizen of this country, you should always have a right to vote. We are obsessed with race in America. Yo, Americans, yo, we go wild. Even five-year-old kids be asking, yo, you look African, where you from? You Nigerian, you Haiti, you Jamaican. 
I understand. I think that word obsessed right. is such an interesting word, and I think that the way that, no, that question is obsessed. framed is almost as if it's like the onus is on us, like we're obsessed with race too much. Like, no, white people are obsessed with race in this country. They've made their laws based on it. They've cast us out because of it. They like destroyed entire groups of people because of it. So, I mean, we're just living in the ripple effects of the stones that were cast in the pond of history. So we're just reacting to it. So we would rather just be human beings and American citizens and you know, people that are pursuing an American dream. We'd rather not have to think about race, but that we did not draw first blood on that. What else do you expect? Yeah, like, I mean, history, I'm not like, obsessed. <laughs> yeah, For me, being in America, give me an opportunity to, like, meet and, like, discover You see, this, so many this guy's mindset, that's, you know, he's the most positive person I've ever met. Like, that's, that's the African, you know. Positivity always struggle to turn a negative situation into a positive situation. Positivity is everything. Your mindset is your it's your weapon. So I love him. Any different culture that I would uh, never see if I was in my country. I would just like maybe hear about it on the news. Yes, I agree. I think they are very obsessed with race. Even when you do like an easy application, like it doesn't matter what application you do, they, they want to know your race. They want to know, you know. Why they don't have a category for Africans? Exactly. You know? That's why we check it out every time. Like, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. they, they, they want to know everything. The thing that pisses me off the most is that when they see you, and they be like, oh, you have an accent. Where are you from? Like, who cares where I'm from? Just sell me this thing and let me keep going. But then when you told them that you're African, they be like, what country? Yeah, they, they, they're so obsessed with where you're from. She be like Wakanda. Like, <laughs> I don't believe that there is an obsession about race in America. I believe that race is a distraction to hide the power, the wealth, and the access to it. So a lot of times there's something put on the table like a rock being thrown and I hold my hand and that's the racism between black and whites, between blacks and Hispanic and other cultures have come here. We'll talk about race just so that we don't have access to the power and the wealth and I think it's done on purpose. There's a, a power that allows us to talk about race if we don't look past it. Some of the question prompts that I see differently and then when I hear somebody say that, I'm like, hmm, that actually makes sense coming from their perspective. So it's been really beautiful having this conversation with you guys. You guys are very knowledgeable and I've learned a whole lot from each and every one of you today. Going into this with like the title of the series, like African versus African American, I think that like, People were gonna come in thinking that we we're gonna be like guns blazing, but this is such a beautiful display of unity. I, I love it. Like, gave be me great. So much life the battle will be great. So um, we've come to the end of the video, and thank you for being there with me. Um, I have a program, you know, that helps you quit five job and learn a skill, you know, that can help you out generate money on autopilot you know making money through assets is the most important thing right now so um, before i go please don't forget to like comment subscribe share and yeah see you bye